back in San Jose, ready to take the green in the streets of San Jose on speed, and we're underway. Joey Scarallo got the drop on Paul Fix. Plenty of beating and banging as they come through the first couple of quarters. Here's the chicane that was just added earlier today. Scarallo gets through first. Here comes Greg Pickett going for second, Derek. And street racing is normally tight, but you haven't seen anything like what's going to happen when you get down to turns five, six, and seven here. Just watch the left-hander. Left-hander right here. This is turn four. Just narrows down, then goes down to a chicane. These boys will have to be so disciplined. Remember what Bora said, said earlier, he, he likes to rough up the suspects. We're gonna keep a real close eye on him. Now Boris is making some moves already in the ACS number 33. Joyce Scarallo grabbed the lead. Second spot now to Greg Pickett. He moved around Paul Fix, who gets shuffled back to third in that Mustang, the 77. Points leader Ruhlman is fourth. Here's Boris in fifth. Klaus Graf, who had to change tires and thus drop to the back of the Trans Am grid. He's moved up to sixth already. Hema Maher is in seventh spot. Tommy Dreese is eighth. Jan Bikas, the start saw an awful lot of contact as they came over the strike. It did, and you're watching Klaus Graf move his way up on the back of Boris said. We talk about changing tires. He had no choice. He had flat spotted the tires in qualifying. They only had a few laps on them, so he didn't do it to get fresh tires. He really had no choice. He had big cord showing through both the two front tires. And on a street circuit in the brake zone, that's so easy to flat spot those tires. And a flat spot literally is when you lock the brakes and the smoke pours off, the road becomes like a file. It literally files its way down through the rubber into the cords, and you have a vibration so bad you simply cannot run at racing speed. So you're forced to put new tires oh, on. Fix already in the wall at turn six on the back stretch. That's Fix who started on the pole in that 77. The Stop Flex Mustang out of the Buffalo area of New York. Fix backs the car up. We will stay green for now, but I believe he's got a lot of damage on the left front corner of that race car. And he was trying to stay ahead of Randy Ruhlman, right behind the Cytomax car of Greg Pickett. So Pickett is okay. That's where Fix fell in, right ahead of Ruhlman. Look at Sed right behind him, Graf behind him. So maybe Fix can get himself going here, and if there's not too much damage, he can just rejoin the back of the field without a pit stop. Joey Scarallo in that. Red and black Corvette, oh. all fixed with huge damage. He has a left front suspension issue, body work crushed down, may well have a radiator uh, that's badly damaged as well. He's bottling up traffic in the GTA field back there. Up front, meantime, Pickett all over Joey Scarallo in the Toyo Tires car. And Greg Pickett came here with a brand new engine. This is a fuel injected engine that has a Hasselgren electronic fuel injection push rod V8 Hasselgren. Normally, you hear that name associated with the Toyota Atlantic, a single-seater series, but they've tested this new engine for Greg Pickett, and they believe, obviously, it'll be to their advantage here. Morris. As Morris said, comes down the inside, has a look. Off the back stretch now, off of turn six. Boris said, Klaus Graf putting a lot of pressure on Randy Ruhlman right now. Here's a move for fourth spot, third spot. Morris. And remember, Ruhlman said earlier, he's got to think about the championship. He cannot get into a fight here, a door-banging fight, so he loses two positions. He is thinking championship as opposed to race win at the moment. So Randy Ruhlman settles into fifth. The leader's already in GTA traffic. That's Monica Coleman shuffled out of the way. And Mikas. And you can see heavy, heavy damage on the Paul Fix machine here. They are still working on this, possibly with an opportunity to get back out. Obviously going to be losing a lot of time. I'll see if I can get through the window net and get a comment from Paul. Paul, what happened? Well, on the outside of the turn, there was a little kitty litter or something from a previous session and uh, just got into it. You know, the tires were warm enough, no problems, just uh, all of a sudden it was a surprise, actually, because we've gone through there twice before. You know, it happens, but hopefully I can get back out and uh, at least uh, take the GT1 win. That's what I'm here for. Still has an opportunity for a win in class, but a lot of work on pit road. Three categories of cars in competition here, a field in GT1 and in GTA. A lot of GTA cars, 19 of them signed in. There you see one, that Pontiac Grand Prix. They're ASA stock cars, essentially, with a spec motor. They're on biased by tires, leaders in heavy traffic, which is what we expected to see. Uh, this is a traffic jam. Look at Boris said. Boris said, have a look down the inside of Greg Pickett, but Scarello with the Toyo tires car, their Corvette, Jaguar 
Mustang, one, two, three. You gotta thread the needle here, be really careful. You gotta trust the traffic sees you coming sometimes, and you gotta take a chance, but that can lead to disastrous. Graf is the one that gets caught, and Ruhlman now is right behind Graf. Watching the leaders thread their way by Tom Sherrill Chevrolet. That's the 80 car. That's one of the Monte Carlos that looks like a GTA car. It's actually the GT1 specifications, along with Monica Colvin's similar Monte Carlo. Sherrill way off the pace. Points leader Randy Roman in the PLP car. Roman back in fifth spot behind leader Joey Scarallo.